Hey everybody, welcome to GMG Review. Today I'm taking a look at the Fallout Wasteland Warfare um, Institute Wave expansion. So what we have now is the Institute is a new faction coming to Fallout Wasteland Warfare. Um, and along with that, a huge amount of new content, adding items, events, dangers, quest lines, perks, um, and of course new characters as well. So um, I've got three of the kits here to show off, and these are the core kit for the um, Institute which gets you basically one, two, three, four Gen 1s, two Gen 2, uh, sorry, Gen Troopers, sorry, Troopers, um, and then you get a Courser and an Institute Scientist. So you basically get the core of like, if you want to use these as NPCs or bad guys, um, or if you want to just start the faction with any of the characters, like a, a bunch of Institute stuff. Now what's great is the Institute are kind of like the, in, in Fallout 4, they kind of felt like the other zombies, the other ghouls, you know what I mean? Like they were, you'd often get attacked or ambushed by just kind of like roving bands of like Gen 1 synths that are all beat up and not doing very well. And they were all fairly just like, you know, robotic. They didn't feel like people, they felt like just robots that were attacking, kind of like the Terminator. Um, and they make good baddies, just good random, you know, broken NPCs wandering around, following whatever last directive they had um, and, uh, and shooting and hit you with stuff. So you got a couple melee ones with their little uh, like shot clubs, and then two with, uh, it looks like, the Institute laser pistol. And then you've got two of the uh, troopers with, uh, I think one's a trooper and one's a recon or a scout. Uh, and they have the Institute laser rifle and Institute pistol, and then a courser, which is of course the human looking ones, the ones that can blend in, um, that hunts down and brings back rogue synths with a, it looks like an assault rifle, because it's trying to blend in and look like a human. And then an Institute scientist, who can also just be like a random Institute person too, but they, they go above ground, they freak out, and they wear their, their cool little, um, uh, hazmat suits and stuff too. So uh, all in the same resin, they have textured bases. I'll pull them out just so you can see them. I haven't put them together yet, but I was, I went through the bag to make sure all the pieces were there. Um, nice flat casting on the bases, no warping, all the pieces are intact. And for the most part, the casts are super clean. I like there's like a rad roach in the base there. Um, and, and yeah, just like ready to rock and roll to the box almost, just put them together, uh, some basic super gluing and they're ready to go. Uh, and there's your eight minis. And again, just a great add-on pack if you just want to add more bad guys. Now, I will note there's no cards in the box. Um, that's something that stopped, I think, with the last, with the first wave. And if you want to get all the cards now, they're available separately. And at first, I didn't know how I felt about that, but I'm actually really happy it is that way now because so many of my friends have huge collections of post-apocalyptic miniatures that are perfect for playing Fall Wasteland Warfare. And so you you, you really want, you want to be, be able to get these two things separately. And so... Uh, what they have now is they have the Institute Wave card pack, this expansion pack. Gives you everything for the, uh, like in this expansion, including stuff that's not even pictured here in these models. Uh, as well as just like a shed load of new items, new dangers, new events, some new quest lines for Nick Valentine and stuff. Uh, and then of course your exploration event cards that go along with these. I'll go through those in a second just so you can see an example of what they look like. We'll just finish looking at the miniatures first. But I think this is a better format for doing it because you... <laughs> This is the content that lets you go and have adventures and do things and be surprised, right? It's the, the thing that Fall Wasteland Warfare does really well is it it, 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 it can be a head-to-head -head game, and I know people are playing it that way, but it's trying to also simulate, if you want to just go and explore the wasteland using the RPG system and the, the core rules, you can do that, and having these decks of cards lets you procedurally generate your adventure and have these surprises while going off and doing little quests. And so I like that that content, like the let's go do things and be surprised, I already have a collection of miniatures part, is separate and I can just enjoy the game that way by getting these waves of card packs. So um, more just synths. So what are you gonna get? You're gonna get more Gen 1s. There's new, new and different sculpts. So we get another baton, uh, two more pistols in the baton, and then two more Gen 1s, just basically armed opposite. So you got two, gen, sorry, Gen 2 synths rather, the troopers that are armed kind of opposite with different sculpts. So, this one really, the this expansion, it kind of doubles what you have with all different sculpts. So now you can have six, sorry, eight Gen 1s, like a whole pack of Gen 1s and four Gen 2s. And then you still have a Courser and a Scientist in there. And then this one gives you all your name characters. So you're gonna get Kellogg, who's one of my favorite characters in the whole, even though he doesn't really appear in the game, he's one of my favorite characters. He's just, he, I like that he's just a scummy dude because you walk back through his brain at one point. Uh, A218 and Z247 are both gonna be in here as well. So another Courser. Um, actually, I think they're both coursers technically. Uh, option for you to have, and if you don't want to use them as name characters, you just got some cool follow character sort of like name people as well. Um, what else is in this wave? Well, the easiest way to show you that is to show you the um, the cards in this in this wave section. The vault uh, folker in this one, so you get a uh, dweller and a security officer and cards to go with them. Strong, Nick Valentine, and Hancock, some sort of associates that you can have, and then Fist, an Overlord card, Skirmisher. 
And then lots more Brotherhood stuff. You get Lancer Captain Kells, Elder Maxon. That's a great sculpt. I'm stoked to paint him at some point. Um, Field Scribe Shield, a Knight Tech, so another Power Armor Knight that's uh, like a, a, a repair guy. And then these are the cards for everything that's in the Institute. So you've got Z247, A218, Kellogg, the Engineer or Scientist, like you can use them as either. And then the Courser, Troopers, Patrollers, oh, that's what they call the other Gen 2 as a Patroller. And then all the gens, Gen 1s, either Gen 1 Synths or Battered Gen 1 Synths as your character cards. Um, they all come, there is an associated AR card with every single one, so if you want to play the, because this is the way, I, 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 my favorite way to play Fall Weeks When Warfare is to have adventures. I, I love the solo and co-op play. Um, and when you see us going back to it soon, uh, it's going to be basically focused on that. Uh, and having all these available, basically, these are your matrixes, so when you have something show up on the table, you've got the ability to, to have it operate using the, the activation dice. You get your synth um, faction card. So what is what is it that synths do? Well, uh, they have. I like that their faction symbol is the robot faction symbol, but like with half a human face. That's really clever. They can't be heroic and can't be equipped with perks. So if you notice, uh, some of these guys have the synth symbol. So for instance, your coursers and stuff. So Z247 doesn't have that symbol because he can be heroic. Uh, same with A218 doesn't have that symbol, but when you get down to the basic synths, all right, they all have that symbol up in the corner, right? So, uh, actually, sorry, A218 does have that symbol. He can't be heroic, but Z247 can, and I think the Courser can be heroic as well. The Engine of Science can, yeah, the Courser doesn't have that symbol because the Courser is human enough that they can they can be heroic and have like special skills and stuff too. Which I think is that's a really like, I mean it's just a neat way of making them making them different. And so of course they can't use food, drink, uh, booze, um, chems, clothing, armor, or power armor because they're robots and they just don't. And except for items which remove damage from a robot, since cannot use cards that show the robot icon or uh, anything that can be used by robots. Since may use cards that show the synth icon, uh, they're immune to blood and, um, sorry, bleeding and, uh, and radiation damage. Effects that uh, describe their affecting robots also affect synths, and any conflicting rules supersede the cards here. Uh, synths don't follow the rules for robots. And then you get your cheat sheet on the back. Uh, so you're going to get a bunch of quest lines. I love the part one, part two, part three ones that unlock. So some Nick Valentine quests. Gorilla in the Midst. That should definitely be one that I play. <laughs> <laughs> if anyone will fight the good fight, it's Lucretia. Too many have gone missing already, so she works tirelessly to prevent more. Some people are being held captive in a generator building. She needs a special tool which can be used to open the loading bay door. Most people think it's a piece of junk. And then the tool to open the generator building is hidden at uh, one of several pre-agreed locations. The risk of leaks is too great, so it must be hidden without anyone seeing. Even your own people, Lucretia will click the tool later. There's a giddy up buttercup, and then some one-offs, a robotics engineer, weapons engineer, potential witness, photo shoot, and know your enemy. And then I'll have associated events and exploration cards, new perks, hack robots, finesse, quick thinking. You just get to gain a inspiration, light step. Uh, when a mine would be activated, do the movement by this model, flip a, a luck token. If uh, you're lucky, the mine's not triggered. Nuclear physicist, out of black die when using a weapon that deals radiation damage. Penetrator, when shooting, ignore an item of cover. Impatient, once per activation, may gain a damage to spend a, uh, uh, to gain a quick action. Stun resistant, you can't take stun damage, and then tangle when engaged, you make an opposing model, sorry, uh, you may make an opposing model which is disengaging, make an agility test, if successful, the opposing model cannot disengage this turn, it must choose a different action instead. If opposing model is successful, they can disengage and they get, without getting a free attack, and you can only use it once per activation. And then new leader skills, you're a synth expert, <laughs> you're beloved, uh, if this leader can use luck, model uh, may use the leader's luck as if they had the luck ability. That's cool. Inspiration, when leader is removed due to an attack by an opposing model, up to four friendly models line of sight, and the leader's uh, leadership range may immediately make a quick action. Gatherer, you're a hoarder. If leader's unengaged, models may use the leader's perception. Weathered, plus two, uh, gain plus two to your uh, radiation resistance. Security expert, if leader's unengaged, models may use their lockpick, uh, and they can catch, they can share it red instead of yellow. They can throw things far. And then the tech chief, if leaders are engaged, models may use the leader's computer skill. And then R&D during setup, draw two mods and attach one to any matching unmodded piece of equipment and discard the other. Just handy, cool stuff. And then like the dangers are also hilarious. So these are some of my favorite cards in the entire um, set. So there's dangers and strangers because sometimes strangers are dangerous and sometimes strangers are just strangers and also creature cards. There's three kinds, I just kind of stacked them. Um, I love these things. I love the random occurrence stuff that can happen in Fall Wasteland Warfare. I think it's one of the best parts of the game, and I love just getting more. 
Instant synth. Your foot disturbs a corroded synth relay grenade. A Gen 1 synth appears next to you out of thin air and shoots before being teleported back to where it came from. <laughs> <laughs> Under pressure through a film of dirt, you notice movement. It's the pressure gauge of some underground tank and it's flickering to the red. <laughs> Place a cap model under the, uh, this model to mark the location. And consequence, centered on the marker, resolve, yeah, the bad, bad attack. And then no direction. Without a leader, things can fall in disarray. If your leader has been removed, test intelligence plus two. Uh, if you pass, no effect. If you fail, add minus two uh, stats to this model. Minus two effect. What kind of creatures can show up? I'm sure it's all instinct related. A passive blood bug. <laughs> the blood bug lands in your arm and walks along your arm seemingly unaware. Test your endurance. Uh, <laughs> if you uh, pass it, you just you keep your coolant to parts. If you fail, it sinks its proboscis into you. Gain a, um, sorry, a poison, but after it adds damage counter. Flip and discard if not showing poison. Uh, robot sin, since aren't affected. Hungry Brahmin. A possessive dog. Disturbed nest. And flightless bloat flies. <laughs> just, just random cool things that happen. Strangers. The Seer, I see the future, do you want to know? If you accept, look at the three next event cards, reveal them to your opponent and leave them in your same order, then remove them. A Bushmaster, uh, test intelligence to remove the Bushmaster. Enemies must successfully test Perception minus two to be able to shoot or throw at you. And then a Vault Dweller shows up. We're raising caps so we can reopen the caved-in vault nearby. In exchange for a donation, I can uh, have our team come by and help you out. Give them any one item to add the following consequence. Choose any model. They get attacked at uh, two. X Institute Engineer, Moonshiner. Want to try something for my still? <laughs> That's funny. And then like a bajillion items. Like so many more items. T60F Power Armor. Oh, geez, what else? Power Armor, like a frame, just Power Armor frame. Uh, T60 Power Armor. T51 Power Armor. 51 Power Armor. A sensor. I like to get multiples of some things too, so I'm sharing them. An internal database. Elder paint can only be used by T60 or T60F power armor. Buff tats, so like mentats that are also buff out. Spark, ultra jet, beer, an impact exchanger, a Braxo paint, Vim refresh paint, a headlamp, plus two lockpick, plus two perception, but you have to have it for these are all mods for power armor. Reactive plates, tons more power armor stuff. Rusty knuckles, targeting HUD, recon sensors. Tesla coils, uh, serrated bayonet for your big nuclear guns for your heavy weapon, a counterweight for your heavy weapon, which is the strength required to use it, uh, melee weapon attachments like being jagged, being light, uh, assault rifle or pistol attachment, always hit intended target when firing in a melee, aligned sights, that's cool, that's a good, that's a good item. But just more, more cool stuff, because like one of the best parts about this game, an airship captain's hat, plus one charisma, plus one intelligence, a battered fedora, Luck plus two gains um, the perception ability. An Institute Division head coat, plus one perception, minus one endurance, plus one intelligence. Uh, a tricorn hat, plus one charisma, and increases the distance to your leadership. Shoulder rags for super mutants only. Gain, uh, I think that's charge. I can't remember what that, I think it's a charge damage, melee, melee charge. Leg guards for super mutants, bladed helmets, heavy synth armor, microscope. You can sell it for 22 caps. Power Armor Patch, Fragile Bobby Pins, <laughs> plus two lockpick, or two lockpick if you don't have the skill, gain lockpick, after for success you have to discard it. A Gen 1 Synth Override, Stethoscopes, Heavy Weapon Mounts, Stealth Boys, Fusion Cores, Heavy Laser Turrets, Jesus, there's so much stuff here. Final Judgment, some special weapons, Flare Guns, Laser Pistols, Kellogg's Pistol, Power fists, plasma pistols, SMGs, rippers, nail boards, super sledge, miniguns, gatling lasers, more batons. I like to give you more of the basic weapons too because you need more out of the basic pack. More laser rifles, pipe pistols, assault rifles, combat shotguns, and 10 mil pistols. So just like a massive stack of like gear that you can potentially find. Which makes the games more fun because I honestly, the Cracker Jacks part of the game where you get to find things is one of the most fun things about Fallout. It's one of the most fun things about literally any Fallout video game too is going around and trying to see what you can scrounge. Like, you, the fact that it's procedurally generated, it's different every time. Uh, you know, there's some set items, obviously, but for the most part, you get to find different stuff. That is a great part of the game, and the tabletop game sort of emulating that and reflecting that is great. So I'm, I, I love the models. The models are great. They look just like in the game, so I'm stoked to paint them. They're gonna be fun to have as bad guys to have around that aren't super mutants, because obviously one of the other threats that are sort of like around are, are the Institute, and you know, just the, the rogue bits of it that are wandering around the wasteland. 
I'm more excited actually about this. <laughs> I love miniatures, I love playing toy soldiers. I love having more bad guys to kind of like throw into the mix for games. More stuff to find and do and unearth is a great thing for this game. And I think it's a genius move putting it all in one pack. So I hope more of these come out. I hope that as we go forward, obviously they're kind of, they're, they're flushing out all of the Fallout 4 stuff. We're kind of getting towards the end of like what was in that. If we start seeing some more Fallout 3 stuff, we start seeing some Fallout 2 stuff. I know New Vegas is all up in the air, but like regardless, just seeing more of these waves of packs, the kind of different themes, different timelines, different bad guys. Aces, it's what the game needs. Um, just like a, uh, you know, a, a role playing game, having more modules and adventures and things to do. Fallout's a great framework, more consumable content, more things to surprise and like the player thing is an awesome thing, so. These are awesome to look like in the game. You know, like that's, it's making cool miniatures at this point. It, they're based on an IP, so they, they fit the IP and they look fantastic. But separating this out and having it be a separate pack, I think it really drives towards the intent of, you know, making Fallout a game that players can enjoy based on, you know, that exploration, finding stuff out, having a nice random system and table of things you can equip. So I'm excited and it's going to get me painting more Fallout probably this week. So hope you enjoy that. We'll see you for more Fallout Wasteland Warfare and GMG reviews in the future. Test on Ash. Have working here. I hope you enjoyed that video. If you uh, want to support the channel, of course, like and subscribe and hit the little bell below so you get notifications when I post future content. I do post stuff seven days a week. Uh, if you want to support the channel um, further, you can, of course, buy a t-shirt through Spreadshirts, um, buy a measuring gauge or objective markers from Death Ray Designs. Um, or, of course, most importantly, there is Patreon. Patreon is what makes all this possible. Uh, keeps the lights on, pays for the studio costs, pays for the equipment, model costs, and everything else. And most importantly, um, puts food in my kids' bellies and a roof over their heads. Uh, uh, big thanks to everyone past, future who supported me. Uh, I do this stuff because of you guys, and of course, I will continue doing it as long as I can.